If your Google Ads for your pressure washing company are not performing or you're thinking about running Google Ads for your pressure washing company, you're gonna wanna watch this video. If you don't know me, my name's Sean and I run the Social Media Pros, a pressure washing digital marketing agency. But today I wanna talk about Google Ad campaigns for pressure washing. I also wanna talk about if it's worth running Google Ads for your pressure washing company. But we're just gonna jump right into the video and I'm gonna start giving you guys a ton of tips if you're gonna be running your own Google Ad campaigns. So the first question that I kinda of wanna ask or that a lot of people may ask is, are Google Ads actually worth it? And the answer is not to be clickbaity, but it actually depends. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the factors that you should really consider before you start running pressure washing Google Ads um, or you start throwing a bunch of money at your campaigns. The first factor is, do you have the knowledge to run a proper pressure washing Google ad campaign? And the reason that I say this is I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with companies where they call me and we start talking about Google ads and they say, Google ads don't work. I've sunk $4,000 in the last two months into Google ads and I didn't get a single lead. The thing is, is that there's so many small, you know, settings and changes and things that you should be aware of when you're setting up and building a pressure washing Google ad campaign that often get missed if you don't know what you're doing. The second consideration that you should make before starting and launching a pressure washing Google ad campaign is can your website actually convert the traffic? Because at the end of the day, if it, even if you're extremely well trained, if your website can't convert that traffic, you're just going to throw money away. It doesn't matter how low you get the cost per click. It doesn't matter how many ad groups and ad extensions and all of these things that you do absolutely properly, but if your website cannot convert the traffic, it won't be worth anything. So I'm not going to get into what a website should have in order to convert Google ad traffic, but I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips that if you're going to run your own Google ad campaigns, make sure that you do these things and it's going to help out your conversion rate and get you more leads. The first thing is you wanna make sure that you have lots of call to action buttons that are in the right places and that they stand out. So a call to action button is, you know, if you go to the, the header of your website, there should be, you know, uh, a get a get quote button, a call now button, and those buttons should be layered out throughout your entire website. They shouldn't just be in the header, you know, they shouldn't just be at the footer. Like you wanna put these buttons absolutely everywhere. That way, if, if, if a homeowner is scanning through your website at any given moment, you know, there should be a call to action button right there in front of them on the screen that they can click on if they wanna call you or if they wanna submit their information to you. The second thing you want to make sure is is that your website stands out because you know if if I were to go to Google and type in pressure washing companies and click on a Google ad, if your website does does not absolutely blow me away or stand out in any way, shape, or form, like if it looks very basic with only a couple of pages, I may call, but honestly, I'm probably going to hit the back button and then just go see and look around at the other pressure washing websites. And honestly, if I land on one that like blows me away or really stands out and looks really professional, I may end up calling that company. So. It's very important that your website looks very professional if you're going to be spending money on Google Ads to send traffic to that website. Because I can't tell you how many times I've taken calls from guys who are currently running their own Google Ad campaigns, or maybe they've spent a bunch of money and they didn't have any results. And the very first question that I have that I ask them is, send me a link to your website. And more often than not, I'll look at the website and it's you know self built built on something like Wix with a couple of pages, and it just it's just missing everything that it should. So it's like you know even had their campaign been flawless, this website would have never converted the traffic. So this is a super important thing that I feel like is often overlooked. And honestly, this is why this past year at, at our company, we stopped running Google ads for pressure washing companies whose websites that we didn't develop or they didn't have a professional website that came from another company because we found that out, you know, pretty early in the year, you know, that when we would run, you know, we, we've, we've spent over $2 million in pressure washing Google ads. Like we know how to run a flawless Google ad campaign. Um, but you know, if we're running that to, you know, just subpar websites, it doesn't matter what we do. It, we're, you're never going to get the traffic to convert. So, you know, it's super important that you make that a focal point. Also a really quick side note about your website is you want to make sure that you have set up a thank you page. Um, basically the thank you page is like if somebody goes to the contact page of your website and they submit their information, it redirects them to a thank you page. The reason that this is important is because when you start running your Google ads, you're going to want to optimize for conversions, not clicks. Well, one of the ways that Google ads tracks conversions is how many times, you know, uh, somebody who clicked on a Google ad ended up on that thank you page, because obviously they're only going to end up on that thank you page if they fill out the form. So make sure that you have a thank you page and make sure that it's set up to redirect properly. 
And the last thing you should really consider before you start running uh, your Google Ads is do you have the money? And the reason that I say this is because with anything marketing related, you know, you never want it to really be your last ditch effort. You know, if, if you're operating on very thin margins and you don't have a lot of money to spare, I probably wouldn't recommend running your own Google Ads or honestly even hiring a company to run your Google Ads because what if things don't work out? You know, Google Ads can get expensive. The average campaign should spend anywhere from 800 to 1500 or more a month on their Google Ad campaign. And what if it doesn't, you know, nothing pans out after a month or two and you've sunk two or three thousand dollars into it. So really Google Ads should be reserved for a company that's been in business a little bit. They already have lead flow and they're not absolutely depending on this Google Ad campaign to deliver them all of the leads that they need to continue to run their business. So let's assume that you've checked all the boxes, right? You've gotten all of the proper training to run Google Ads. You're, you would consider yourself, you know, maybe a close to an expert with Google Ads. Let's assume that you have an amazing website that can convert that traffic and that, the, that you have the money to actually run the Google campaign. Um, I'm going to give you some tangible tips if you've checked all three boxes that you can actually start doing and um, that you can walk away with this video and you know implement and start getting um, a, hopefully a better cost per lead on your Google ad campaigns. So the very first tip that I have for you guys, and I actually put this in, um, I, I spoke a little bit about this in the last video that I did, um, and it's, it's making sure that you set your keywords up for exact match targeting. So when you create a Google ad campaign, um, and assuming you've had some training or you had some experience, you should already know this, but when you put the keywords in to Google, they're going to have you select three classifications of your keywords. And those are broad match, phrase match, and exact match. And my suggestion for you guys, with you not being super experts in Google ads, is to just use exact match. We use broad match, but that's because we understand how to use it and how to set other parameters so that we don't have any other issues when we run Google ads. Um, to briefly exp explain how this works to you, let's assume that you're, one of the keywords in your campaign is roof washing. Well, if you set your or roof washing companies, let's use that. If you set the campaign up for exact match, the only time your ads are gonna be served or shown or you're gonna be charged is if somebody types in roof washing companies, right? Now, if you have phrase match um, and the word roof, mat, roof wash is in your campaign, um, that means that it, that it can encompass the entire keyword. So roof wash detergent, you would show up for that. Um, roof wash um, mechanic or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? Like there's a, a lot of other words like house wash detergent, right? Like you wouldn't want to show up for that search or pressure washing repair, right? Because the, the word pressure washing is in your campaign, but they added repair. And since you've selected phrase match, you're going to show up for that and you don't want to. The other is broad match, which is if you don't know what you're doing, you can lose a lot of money very quickly um, because it just needs to encapsulate one of the words. So if you have house wash and your campaign is set for broad match, if somebody types in house repair, you could show up for that search because the word house is in that keyword. So my tip for this is just make sure that you have set up um, exact match targeting. If you don't have a list or don't know how to do keyword research for um, accumulating a list of pressure washing keywords for your Google ad campaign, drop your email down in the comments and I will personally send you the exact keyword uh, list that we use as a base for all of our clients when we run pressure washing Google ads. The second tip that I have for you guys when you're creating your Google ad campaigns is make sure that you're optimizing for, for conversions, which I briefly spoke about earlier in this video. You do not want to optimize for clicks. Um, obviously, optimizing for conversions is telling Google, hey, I only, I, I would really like to only serve my ads to people who are likely to convert into a lead, not just people who are likely to click on my website, right? And that actually matters. The kicker to this is that if you're going to optimize your campaign for conversions, um, you need to set up conversion tracking. You need to be able to track when somebody lands on your thank you page, when people click on the call now buttons on your website and all of that good stuff. So assuming, remember that you have proper training, um, you should already know how to set up conversion tracking, but make sure that you set up conversion tracking and that you optimize your campaigns for conversions, not clicks. And the last tip that I have for you guys really is just limiting your cost per click. Um, and so what I mean by this is, you know, when it comes to cost per click and limiting that bid, um, you can actually navigate to the Google Keyword Planner and you can set your location and punch in a keyword and Google will tell you what competitors in your area are actually paying for that keyword. The reason that you wanna set a limit on that is you don't wanna burn up your whole campaign on a specific keyword that you don't wanna spend a lot of money on. So let's let's say in your area, the range for driveway pressure washing is $2 to $15. 
I'd probably set my limit to like seven or eight bucks, right? That's the most I want to pay for that. Maybe even a little bit less. It just kind of depends on a lot of other factors. But if you don't set your cost per click limit, then you could spend 15, 16, $17 for the keyword, you know, uh, driveway pressure washing. You know, obviously certain keywords, you're going to want to set higher limits. Like obviously roof washing, house washing, things like those, you're going to want to set higher limits for driveway pressure washing, maybe, you know, patio pressure washing, things like that. You can set lower cost per click limits. But again, the, the way you can get a gauge on what limits you should be setting on these keywords is you just go to the Google keyword planner, put in your location, punch in a keyword, and then you can see what other people are paying for it. But make sure that you set your limits. And for the most part, guys, this is all that I really have. You know, I, it, it would be very difficult to put into a video how to you know run a pressure washing Google ad campaign start to finish there's a lot of training um, and there's a lot of courses out there there's a website called Udemy um, where you can actually take Google ad trainings it's not going to be pressure washing specific but it's going to give you a really good grasp and a good handle so I'll drop down a couple of courses in the description um, that you could purchase from Udemy um, they're only like I think like seven or ten or fifteen dollars to give you some decent training um, so if you don't have the proper training and you want to get the proper training that's a good way to do it if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff that I've talked about in this video feel free to drop it down in the comments and I will catch you guys in the next video.